Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are taking a look at how to create an LED screen by using the particle system. Now I'm well aware the geometry nodes are a thing, it's been in development, but still, this is an update to one of my old tutorials. This one is dead easy to make and it's extremely satisfying to watch. So as always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, I'll be offering a free resource file with this tutorial that you can find in the description below on my Gumroad. In any case, let's get into it. So I'm gonna open up Blender 2.93. I don't have the screencast keys add-on open because it's not working properly with uh, 2.93. I'm still figuring that out. So I'll be just guiding you through the whole process. In any case, it's time to create our LED screen. And best part, you can actually play videos on it. Okay, so I'm gonna press A twice, X to delete everything. And I'm gonna press seven on my numpad to go into top-down view. Shift A, mesh, add a plane. S, control, and then drag your mouse to scale it up somewhere around there. Control A to reset that scale. And now press tab to go into edit mode and press W to subdivide. In your bottom left corner, you find this small menu and just increase the number of cuts to 10. So the point of doing this is because we'll be using these vertices to actually tell the hair system, the particle system, where to put our little LED lights. Next step, I'm gonna add a subdivision modifier. So I'm gonna go on my modifier step, subdivision modifier, and then I'm gonna add a levels viewport, let's say of two for now and change it to simple. If I go into wireframe, you can see that the number of vertices is still the same. However, if I turn off optimal display, this is the grid that it's going to be used. Now it's time to make our LED light and it's going to be dead easy. So I'm gonna just go Shift A, add a cube, press GX and move it here to the side so it's not interloping on the center of the scene like so. Now I'm gonna go into edit mode and there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm just gonna add a bevel and possibly a subdivision surface just for now. But for the bevel, I'm gonna change it from limit method to weight. So it looks like that. I'm gonna select the bottom four vertices, press N to bring my menu, side menu over here and increase the mean bevel weight to one, something like that. I can then increase or decrease the amount and also increase the number of segments, which gives me a rather interesting shape. I think segments of one, okay, we can leave it at two, it's gonna be fine. Press W to shade smooth and to hide the sidebar and just apply all of those if you'd like. If you don't want to apply them, just leave them there. While we have all of these things selected, I wanna press Shift S cursor to select it, exit edit mode, and then go Shift Control Alt C. And not origin to geometry, but origin to 3D cursor. And that's very important because when the hair system instantiates or rather copies your object on a particular surface, it's starting from its origin point. So that's gonna save you a couple of headaches. Let me just rename the object. This is gonna be the LED and this is gonna be the LED screen say. Okay, now we're ready to set up the particle system. So I'm going to click on the plane, go down on my particle system tab, choose hair, and now I have to click advanced and then source. Instead of faces, I'm going to change it to vertices. So the hairs are actually starting from the vertices instead of the actual faces. And I'm also going to deselect random order. Now under my render settings, I'm gonna change the path of the render as to the object. And with instance object, I'm gonna just choose the eyedropper and choose my object LED. So a couple of things, we need to rotate them the right way. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can go object rotation and then rotate the actual object. But I think for now we can just click on the rotation here, drop down that menu and go to global X and that should help you out. Now they are perfectly aligned. So the thing is, we want to use the modifier stack for this. So if I click on it, it's taking into account the modifier stack prior to the particle system. Otherwise, it's not going to recreate the correct number of these points. So now you might notice that it's not very orderly, <laughs> it's not very organized, and that's because we need to increase the number of the particles until they fill out the whole screen. Something around here. You can also press shift and then just move your mouse so you can fill out any gaps that appear. 
and it should look like this. You can also lower the scale of your LED object like that. So you have just a bit of gaps in between. Now, mind you, every time you bump up the resolution, you will need to increase the number of your emission or rather hair vertices or hair objects and also correct the scale. So that's the only thing that's kind of impractical about it. But otherwise, it works perfectly. Let's go to our shader menu. I'm going to just collapse the side menu. I'm going to click on my LED object. And here I'm going to go under my material properties and add a material. So we have this principle BSDF. Now I strongly suggest that you use the Node Wrangler add-on. You can find it in Edit, Preferences, go under Add-ons and just search for Wrangler and check it. It has a very useful shortcut, which is Control T. So having selected my principal BSDF, press Control T, and it's going to put a texture coordinate mapping and image texture node. Perfect. Exactly what we need. So now I just want to select with the eyedropper for my texture coordinate, the LED, and then click on from instancer and then change this generated to the vector. Now, if I go into my viewport, everything's black, of course. Now I wanna set this up so I can see it, say, in rendered view. So I'm gonna go to my render properties, change from EV to cycles, device to GPU, and feature set, we can leave it at supported. It's not very important. Everything else, it's completely fine. So let's press Shift Z twice, so we see what's happening in rendered view. Of course, it's violet. That's because we still have a couple of steps to do. So returning back to my shader, I'm going to add a emission shader. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to bump the material output a bit over to the right. Shift A and search for a mix shader. So we'll be mixing the picture of the diffuse with the emission. So if I connect the emission, you see we have emission, we have light. And then shift A and add a Fresno, Freno, I don't know how it's said, but very useful note. And I'm doing this because I want the light to be distributed just around the reflection surface of my object, something like that. So the lower we go, the thinner that gradient becomes. And if we lower it from, a, let's say, one, it's going to be extremely thin, but also extremely defined. While if we go the other way, it's going to be much less defined and much bigger depends on what you like. So I'm going to add an image texture or rather I'm going to add a video so I can show you how to set up a video playback to your LED screen. So you want to click open and then choose the video that you'd like to present. In my case, it's going to be a 1080 by 1080 video. So it's a square aspect ratio. And you can see in rendered view that we have something that's very similar to the video that we've chosen. So we have these settings right here. I want to check cyclic, so cycle the images in the movie, of course, and auto refresh. So whenever I change the frame, I see what's happening. However, if I'm changing the frame right now, nothing is happening because you need to tell the image texture or the video texture that the start frame is one and you want to play, let's say, 230 frames. I think that was the duration of the original video. And now you can see that the image actually changed, but it's still very dull. So we need to do a couple of things here. First of which is going to be to increase the strength of the emission, but still it's very white. So I'm just going to pop the color from the image texture to the color of the emission and voila. We have a nice little bit type of image right now. Very cool. You can just decrease the roughness of your LED. You can put in a transmission if you'd like. Increase the specular. Just model it however you would like to model it. Like what a LED would look like. You can also go the other way with your factorial. Maybe make it just a bit less defined. And now if we press 7 on our numpad... We go up so the center is much emptier right now because it's, of course, a transmissive object or rather a transmissive shader. So it all depends on what the look that you're going for is. In this case, I think this Fresno of 1.12 works pretty well. Now, if I, for example, want to increase the resolution of my video, I can just go levels viewport and don't forget to update the levels of the render. So they are a bit squiggly right now, but easily correctable. Now you just need to increase the number of your particles. You can also go back into your material view and just increase it until they completely fill out the area. Don't forget to also go down, just fine tune it so you're not putting in too many of these and then decrease the scale and voila. 
we have a bigger, better resolution. And like I said, if I move along my, my timeline, you can see that it's updating the frames and you can as easily select just a whatever frame you'd like and it's going to update. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something useful from it. I know that you can do this stuff with geometry nodes as well. In this case, you can also basically apply this mesh to anything you want. You can use simple modifiers, simple deform modifiers, cast modifiers, whatever you'd like. It's just a very interesting and useful trick that I, I often use. Now with geometry nodes, of course, it's a different story, but still useful trick. In any case, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. This is also going to be a free resource file that you can download from my Gumroad, which is going to be in the description. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.